Hello everyone, this is Sebastian McMahon from IA Financial Group and I'm back with a new weekly economic review this time for the week ending September 9th, 2022. So looking at the markets this week, uh, the message from central banks, it continues to be heard loud and clear. Now it's the bond market that is selling off, rates are rising. So we had the 2% negative uh, return for long bonds. Uh, this week, so year to date, we're down at we're down about 21 percent. So we're in a bear market for long Canadian bonds. Um, stocks this week rather positive, maybe a technical bounce here. So positive on the TSX, positive on the S&P 500. Uh, price of oil was down. The Canadian dollar bounced a little bit, but the U.S. dollar is just very very strong right now versus all other uh, currencies. That means that the Canadian dollar slipped all the way to 76.5 cents. In this uh, in this neighborhood, now maybe we could see uh, an oversold, uh, not an oversold, an overbought pullback. Let's say from the, the the USD, so that could help the Canadian dollar regain some strength. But strong USD is a very important theme in the markets right now. So if we look at central bank activity this week, there was a lot of stuff to mention. So Federal Reserve and ECB. So Mr. Powell, the Fed chair, uh, had on a, in a speech on uh, Thursday, was again very clear, repeating the message that the fight against inflation is not done, that they will be continuing that fight until they win it. So probably that means rates continue to rise until the end of the year, up until about 4%, and then stay there for most of 2023. So this is still what we're expecting. Uh, the ECB uh, hiked again, it, it was a jumbo hike uh, again this time, 75 basis points. Mrs. Lagarde pointing towards um, towards a hawkish uh, stance from the ECB. So remember, it's a, quite a shift. The ECB had negative rates for pretty much all of the previous decade. So now seeing them hike quickly, uh, that's quite a shift for uh, Europeans. Uh, now, if we look home at the Bank of Canada, we had another jumbo hike of 75 basis points. The leading rate went from 2.5 to 3.25 percent on uh, Wednesday. So that's four consecutive jumbo hikes, 50, 50, 175 now. And if you remember early this year, I was mentioning that, you know, the Bank of Canada needs to go as quickly as possible to neutral and then go beyond neutral and see how far they go. Well, this is exactly what they did. Uh, they went quickly, of course, and now we're above the neutral range, which they expect, which they, they estimate to be within two and three percent, somewhere in there. Now we're at 325. So now we're starting to be restrictive. And the likely course is that we see more hikes by the end of the year. Maybe we'll end between 3.5 and 4 percent so there's a few more hikes or maybe one more jumbo hike to come and after that rates could stay uh, high for most of 2023 but mrs rogers the number two incumbent at uh, the bank of canada gave a speech yesterday and showed that uh, it just gave the, uh, the the roadmap saying that you need they need to see a weaker consumer consumption is just so strong right now they need to see that normalize they need to see uh, a less tight let's say labor market so we're seeing some progress there more on that in a few minutes before they start to think that you know they're done with the, their fight but now the focus is turning on services inflation so on this chart here you have the inflation from services in gray and goods in blue and i've mentioned that in the past i mean the focus was going to turn on that because goods inflation is influenced usually by price of gasoline and this is not coming from you know the impact of monetary policy so impact of monetary policy it's more on inflation expectations and inflation expectations have a big role in wage growth so uh, inflation in services is tightly linked to wage growth. Think about restaurants, hotels, the price that they sell you, uh, things, it, the, the services that they, that, that they give is linked to uh, more deeply to wages than, you know, the manufacturing sector. So inflation in services is still rising. This is what we see on the right hand side. And if you look at the 70s and 80s, you see that there was there were two big bursts of inflation then. And on both times, inflation in goods peaked before the one in services. The first bout was two years before. After that was one year before. And in both times, you see the, the shaded areas on the chart. Well, those are recessions. So both time it took a recession to break the back of services inflation. So I mean, it, it, history doesn't necessarily repeat itself, but lessons from the past is that 
inflation in services is more sticky. You need to fight it uh, stronger and uh, to fight it uh, with enough strength. Maybe that leads you into an economic slowdown that's big enough to create a recession. So the focus is there now. Now, housing, we're going to be talking about it uh, amply. I've done some marketing this week. I was asked the question, do we expect a pull down in the price uh, of houses? Of course, you have to. Uh, first chart showing that how sensitive the Canadian economy is now to interest rates. So now construction and residential investment. I made a mistake here that I was going to uh, mention. Residential investment is 10% of Canadian GDP, which is about a bit more than twice the importance in the US. So very sensitive to what goes on with real estate. And when we think about residential investment, we think about, you know, new houses being built and, you know, renovation, but also all of the financial fees around financial uh, around transactions in housing. They are very important. They're a share of the price of the transaction and places where we like Toronto and Vancouver, where, you know, the average price of a house is well above a million um, that can uh, that, that can add up pretty quickly so if housing slows down that's 10 percent of gdp if you think that the canadian gdp is about two thousand billion dollars a year that's 200 billion dollars a year of uh, gdp that comes from housing so that's that's quite a bit so very sensitive to interest rates, interest rate moves. And if we see less construction, less resale, that's going to be a hit on the economy. That's going to be bigger than in other places in the world on a relative basis. And that brings us to the chart on uh, the price of houses in some selected cities around the country since December of 2019. So just before COVID, you can see prices rose quite a bit. Some places like uh, Ottawa and Gatineau uh, up 57% uh since uh, since before covid so of course people change their habits you you work from home you want to have uh, maybe a bigger home you want to have you know a pool you have to want to have a backyard so all of these things are true but also very low interest rates push the prices of housing higher and as the, the quicker the prices rise the like the more likely you see some speculative speculative bouts uh, coming so all of these factors contributed and now if you grew by you know 30 40 50 percent in a few years seeing a pull down of 20 30 percent is reasonable and that will still leave you with gains since the pre-covid period so of course we need to expect some pull down is it going to be minus 20, minus 25, 30, 40? I have absolutely no clue. We'll see how the market behaves. There are so, so many uh, variables at play here, how monetary policy unfolds, the impact on the Canadian economy. Uh, are we right in, in expecting it to be a, 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 a smaller uh, type of, of, of slowdown? Maybe a small recession or is it going to be getting worse? So all of these will impact, but we need to expect housing prices to fall. So that brings us now to the labor market. So losing jobs three months in a row in Canada uh, since the peak in May, that's 114,000 jobs that were lost. It's a mix of part time and full time, although this month was more full time than, than part time. It's a mix of public versus uh, private sectors. But uh, now uh, Canadian uh, businesses are shedding some jobs, looking ahead at weaker demand and also the um, what will not confirm, uh, convert the uh, the Bank of Canada is the fact that uh, wages are still accelerating and uh, the acceleration of wages in August brings the pace at the highest since 1997. So it's not what they want to see in their fight against inflation. So a very interesting data point here. So uh, what to watch next week, we'll have a reading on housing starts in Canada. So we'll see if there's some uh, more slowdown there. Uh, in the US, we'll have a very important uh, CPI print, so the inflation number will come out. Uh, of course, it should be lower uh, because gasoline prices were down about 10% in August. They're down still in September, so uh, the headline will be lower, but the details will be important. Industrial Production and University of Michigan Confidence Index will also be published. So that wraps it up for the week, ia.ca slash economy. There are some new 
a podcast that we've recorded that are starting to come out every single week. So please give it a try. I'm sure you're going to like it. Uh, Economy Finance 101, it's about a video a month, and we're starting to work on the next batch for October, November, and December. So we'll keep you posted. And again, social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, you can find uh, insights there. So thanks for following us every single week, and I'll be there again next Friday with a new edition of the Weekly Economic Review.